From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello, everyone. I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. With the midterm elections looming just ahead, our national politics continues to be one of division in Washington and other places across the country. Here to discuss what's happening and what lies ahead are two of our favorite political analysts, Democrat Larry Woods and Republican Steve Gill, by the way, will also be talking about some issues in the state that have been part of politics in the last couple of days. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us again on Inside Politics. Thank you. Good to be Larry, here. Larry and I are probably the last two Democrats and Republicans who get along. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll put that I, the, I think that is true. We'll put that to the test today. Um, one of the big questions that was looming in Washington all week was the confirmation of appeals court. Uh, Judge Katani Brown-Jackson of the U.S. Supreme Court, her nomination had to be brought up to the floor by a discharge petition uh, to get it voted on on Thursday. Um, soon to be Justice Brown will be the first black woman to serve on the U.S. Supreme Court. She was confirmed in the Senate to her present job on the appeals court by a strong bipartisan majority. Yet when she went for the high court, she had a lot of Republican opposition. Why is that, Steve? Well, I think a lot more things were learned about her record, in, including the soft uh, on pedophilia record that she had, letting folks who were... That wasn't who were, known beforehand, really? I don't think it was. I, I don't, really? Again, at the district okay. level, they don't look as as, as tightly as they this do when it's a Supreme Court. court. This was not, not right? But they don't look as close as they do for Supreme Courts. Uh, Larry, why have all the Supreme Court nominations, particularly in the last couple of years, become a blood sport? In the last decade at least. It's a kill or die kind of situation for the opposing party and so far the opposing party's lost every time. What also enters into the equation, and let me say she's not soft on pedophilia, that's straight out of QAnon, is where Hawley and Marsha Blackburn and these other idiots got that whole strategy. And What's also going on is Cruz, Blackburn, Hawley, Cotton are all running for president in 2024. Therefore, they're willing to make themselves look like clowns to appeal to fire up their slim base that might get them there, and they're not going to make it. Well, Steve, to, to be accurate, though, she let pedophiles off on, on crimes that had been convicted at lower sentences than even the prosecutors and the defense were agreeing to. Like six-month sentences for pedophilia, that is soft on pedophilia. But, but Steve, the Founding Fathers gave the Senate the right to advise and consent. Is this what they had in mind when they put this in the Constitution? Really? No, I don't think so. I, I think that when you look back, to, I think Ruth Bader Ginsburg got uh, confirmed with about a 90 to, to, to 2 vote. You saw those kinds of votes until recently, even after Judge, just, uh, Judge Bork was borked, uh, even though he had all the credentials you could ever want for somebody on the Supreme Court, they didn't like his political views, and that's what became the new test. That's not what the Founders intended, but that's what it's been recently. Now, Steve, uh, there, had, there were three Republicans who voted in favor of her. They, they broke ranks for the rest of their party. Those who broke ranks with their party in the on the 2020 election for certifying that and, and, and also for some of the impeachments have been, cert have been uh, sanctioned by their state party. Some are getting nominate uh, composition already in their primaries coming up this year. Do you expect... What do you expect to happen to these three senators? I think they're two different two different issues, but I think on, on these three senators, you have Collins, Murkowski, and, and Mitt Romney. Murkowski's in the fight of her life for re-election this cycle. She's likely to not, not return, so she had nothing to lose. Collins has always had to vote more blue than the, than the rest of the Republican Senate because she's in a blue state, and she's always, uh, I, I think, kind of tended down that line. And then Mitt Romney's trying to think he can run for president in 2024. I don't think he gets re-elected to his Senate seat in Utah. In 2024. So again, he knows he's got real troubles at home, and this isn't going to help him or hurt him in that because he's going to be gone. Larry, another one of the GOP members in the House who voted to impeach President Trump. Uh, Fred Upton announced this week he's not going to be seeking re election. It appears the popularity and political power of former President Donald Trump is still pretty strong in the Republican Party. No question. And that's why none of these, one of these, like Blackburn and Hall, et cetera, are going to make it. Uh, Mr. Trump's going to run for president. He's taking in what 15 million dollars a month now uh, in the 2024 calendar year he'll be taking in 40 or 50 million a month he's not going to pass up that opportunity now is he going to win who knows at this point but what is clear is what Steve was referring to I think the state and local Republican parties are getting far more conservative than the national Republican candidates, and that inevitably means the national Republican candidates will have to move further to the right uh, to be viable. And uh, I think that's regrettable, but 
it's just a historic trend. And I think you look at what's happening at the local level. Just this week in Kenosha, Wisconsin, that has had a Democrat county executive for the last 50 or 60 years elected a Republican county executive. Uh, three Republican uh, school board members got placed to replace the uh, current school board members in Kenosha, Wisconsin. That is not a red state or a red area. The difference is they had the, the violence in their streets, they have seen the gas prices, and, and you're seeing a wave building there. And along the border, you've got Democrats running from the Democratic Party as the illegal aliens fled across the border. Steve, the Republicans attacked a black woman for the first seat to be on the Supreme Court. Some of them got mad, walked out of the committee room with this going on. Aren't they t isn't the party taking a risk now that she's going to be on the court of, of some blowback from that, particularly from trying to attract black voters to the Republican Party? Ask President Biden, because he blocked uh, the woman who was going to be nominated, actually tried to block her at the uh, Court of Appeals level, uh, Judge Jackson. He blocked her from being uh, considered for the Supreme Court by threatening to filibuster. Joe Biden blocked what would have been the first woman black Supreme Court justice, and it apparently didn't hurt him. That, that uh, Larry, talking the, point doesn't work with most people in the but, country. But Larry, um, on the other hand, um, the, President Biden was fulfilling a, a campaign promise when he put her, a, a black woman on the bench in, in the high court, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything to help his popularity numbers. He's still about as low as most presidents. He's down in the low 40s. Why isn't he getting the bounce out of this? Most people are not going to vote for president or re-election for president based on which judge got nominated for the Supreme Court or any other court. Biden's done the same thing Ronald Reagan did. Ronald Reagan promised, I'm going to appoint a woman to the Supreme Court. Politicians do this kind of thing. It wasn't any surprise to anybody. Uh, clearly, the Democratic Party wanted a more diverse court, not just Joe Biden. Uh, Steve, uh, most people over the years have thought the Supreme Court as being the more neutral of the three branches of government as compared to Congress or compared to the White House. Uh, in this particular situation, though, uh, are we going to see a further decline in the feelings about the Republic, about the Supreme Court being neutral? Because the nine justices of the Supreme Court, unlike all the other federal officials in the judicial system, don't even have to follow a code of ethics. They don't have a code of ethics. <clears throat> well, as, as opposed to the White House that has one and doesn't follow it, when you look at what's going on with Hunter Biden and Joe Biden's brother and everything else, uh, you know, I think the bottom line is that the Supreme Court should have a code of ethics. There are ethics rules for lawyers, and I think they apply to the court. Steve Gill is our guest on Inside Politics, along <clears throat> with Larry Woods. Steve's a Republican analyst, and, and uh, Larry is a Democratic analyst. We'll talk about the issues going on in Washington. We'll talk about Tennessee later. Back to more conversation after this break. This